What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the top of the map in the blue color playing as Ra. His name is Joe. His opponent today in the red color playing as Zeus. His name is Squash. We've got ourselves a Zeus versus Ra fun time shenanigri thingamajig I'm a what we'll see how it's gonna go uh so Zeus versus Ra this is a matchup that I've been wanting to watch for, for quite a while at the very tip top level so we get we get one of the best Greek players versus one of the best uh Egyptian players in this matchup uh and the reason why I want to watch it is because I find it so hard to play this matchup uh from kind of both sides. So I want to see what these guys do uh, a little bit differently and see if we can't not figure out a way to, to play around it uh, or at least figure out how to how to play it from both sides a little bit better. Uh, but Joe here, he's struggling just a little bit. He's getting his gold up uh, in the early game. He does go for the... This is, this is a little bit earlier than I think we're used to with Joe. He normally goes for uh, a couple of less gold villages early. Uh in favor of maybe like five villages on food, but he goes for the three gold villages right now. So he might be able to get that temple up a little bit earlier without having to spam uh, villages onto it by doing this sort of a build. So we'll see how it's going to go. Uh, excited to see that. And we'll see what Squash is going to do. He's already moving over onto a secondary hunt here. You can see he's only got the 600 food in his starting base. And this build here is looking incredibly similar to a build that I've shown on my YouTube channel. For those of you who are wanting to get better at Age Mythology, I've got the first four-minute build series for every single god pretty much uh, up on my YouTube channel at the moment. And this start here from Squash is the... Uh, the standard opener for Zeus on a 600 food map. Uh, and Squash is going to be doing it to a T. He might go for a 416. He might go for a 430. He might go for a 425 with the Archaic Hero. All of these things are options in this uh, in this game. But it's, uh, it's a way forward and it's going to give him a really, really strong start here in this game. You can actually see him sitting with six villages on the on the hunt over here, which does indicate to me that he wants to go for a far second town center behind all of this uh, as he is going to chuck up his temple over here. He might even eat this pig with these villages here after this hunt is gone and then he's going to jump over onto the wood and onto the gold here as well. So uh, we'll see how it's going to go. Joe, on the other hand here, Needs to chuck his temple up and he's just about to do so. Uh, it puts him in a bit of a strange position here. It's in a safe position. He's going to be building all these houses over here to try and shifting sand units into this uh, into this box over here. And if we take a look on this bottom side of the map where he might want to grab the town center, he does have rhinoceros on it and he does have a large gold mine nice and close to it. So Joe going for a far second town center here might just work, but he will have to play around the fact that Athena... Uh, aggression might be coming his way and he might have some troubles with that in the near future as we do see the units now moving forward onto this location if for Joe he's going to be wanting to advance a little bit later it looks like he's not going for the 4 minute advance 430 advance time going for a 445 instead a little bit slow but squash on the other hand he's already well on the way to his uh, classic age and it doesn't look like he went for the archaic hero here instead favoring the 4 uh, 416 advance time, which I do rate. I rate going faster to the classical age uh, rather than going for a, uh, a different kind of advance. And it does look like Squash here is basically just going for a kind of standard, a standardish advance, a uh, standardish Athena rush here. He's got six villages on wood. He's got the Jason coming out. Did he get himself an economic upgrade here? No economic upgrade. So he might be thinking about building himself another Minotaur or something here in this game. Uh, but he's going to be able to spam everything out. And one thing you're going to notice here when you go for the 416 advance is you're going to have just a little bit of resources in the bank. So we'll see what Squash is going to use, uh, what, what Squash is going to send, spend for those resources. You can see him getting the Jason out. He throws the house down over here, maybe to, to prevent him getting uh, pop blocked. Maybe he could have done with just a little bit of extra wood income instead of having two villagers on gold here. Put a villager over onto the savannah tree here to get himself that Odysseus out straight away. But he gets it out nonetheless. 
And now Odysseus is going to be coming through, I'm sure, for uh, for Squash very, very shortly. And he goes for double military academy here, ladies and gentlemen. The Katoskopos causing a little bit of pain over here as uh, Joe trying to empower this, uh, this granary as best as he can. Get a couple of hits onto that Minotaur there as the villagers moving back and forth. Joe, on the other hand here, he's got his wall set up. He's got 200 gold in the bank. At this point, he might be looking to just jump straight to the heroic age here behind all of this and go straight into like basically everyone on uh, everyone on food, everyone on wood, and no one on gold after it gets pushed off this gold mine. We'll see how it's going to go as Squash now starting to push in onto this location uh, with his double military buildings. This Wadget causing some issues at this point, going to force Squash back just a little bit as his Odysseus still not quite in here, going to be sending that one forward now, an archery range getting dropped behind all of this. Makes a lot of sense at this point to go for that archery range when all is said and done, but Squash does only have eight villages on food here. So we'll see uh, what he's going to be able to make happen here in this game as now the Squash units sitting in on this position, ready to start putting pressure Onto, uh, onto this location here, and we'll see what Squash, uh, sorry, we'll see what Joe's doing. Joe just grabbing himself the armory here. He's chucking up another watchtower on this location. Absolutely love that play. He sees all of the hoplites out early. He has the walls up. He's got the walls over here. This is a really, really difficult uh, position to push through. And that that's this is what makes Joe so good. He defends these positions so absurdly well. Not only that, he also has the shifting sands uh, for uh, some point here as Squash pushing in. Going to be losing one hoplite. That's going to be half of this watchtower kind of paid for at this point. And his villagers are back to mining gold and Squash has to pull back, rethink his decisions here about what he wants to do. He's going to be pushing back into this position. He does have the restoration. This 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 tower here is a little bit weak because Joe hasn't walled it. He's used houses to wall it in instead of using a, a regular wall. So let's see if this is going to mean, uh, if this is going to be a, a cue for Joe to come in here as we do see a cheeky little... Uh, shifting sands in onto this position, the bolt onto the pharaoh there. Squash might take this as an opportunity to push in and uh, and go after this uh, this entire location here, breaking down this back house, breaking down this front house. The Minotaur over here getting pulled back does end up getting taken down over here. We see the Odysseus pushing in lots of damage coming in onto Joe, but Squash has taken a lot as well as we see the rain coming in to block any potential restoration. There is no, or there are no farms here, I should say, as a cheeky building placement here. Ghost building coming up going to be able to take out the Odysseus on this location as well as Joe going to be able to take out the Odysseus restoration not going to be able to come through we will be seeing the Jason getting taken down but a tower does go down here as the units will be pushing back here and I imagine Joe's just going to calmly be able to deal with this he hasn't clicked up to the next stages now he does click through uh Hathor at this point it's going to be a bit of a delayed Hathor, but Squash has done some damage here just in the fact that rain is being cast without being able to get any value from it, simply just blocking the restoration on that attack. We'll see how things are going to go, but Joe, he's uh, able to get to the next stage, which will allow him to jump all onto wood and buy resources if he needs to and go straight into ma uh, mass chariot arches, which is what he's going to be wanting to do here. Uh, Squash, on the other hand, has to think about, well, if, if my opponent hasn't farmed yet and he's going one town on Heroic Age, what can he do? Answer, just make chariot arches. So... Squash needs to throw down a stable now and start thinking about making Hippocon. Uh, we'll see if he's going to make it work with just the Hoplites. He does still have that restoration, but I imagine just build the, the Migdol in your base nice and defensively and you, you should be completely fine in a way. As yeah. there's the Pharaoh popping out for Joe to pop down his stuff. He's going to be throwing down some farms now as well. You really only need a handful of farms here. Maybe five farms total when all is said and done. Uh, when you're going for these sorts of chariot archer, chariot archer builds. Just because you don't have rain remaining. So it's, there's not really much point anymore. Joe's also floating a whole bunch of food here. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to just... Um, well, firstly, start villager production. But... Uh, 
Secondly, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just put all those villagers over onto something else. As you do see, the Hoplite's going to be moving in onto this position here. The villagers retreating back, and Squash not going to be able to do all too much here with his Hoplites. Meanwhile, pumping more units onto the food in his main base. We've got the gold vines doing what it needs to do. Villagers over here getting what they need to do as well. As you do see, the Hoplite's pushing in onto these houses, trying to take that down. As the Odysseus going to get some good damage done onto the uh, onto the Patsukos here. And Squash just says, screw it. It's time to go taking down the tower, taking down the Migdol stronghold all at once here as the Pharaoh in this position getting taken down by the Toxodes here. The the, uh, the Migdol trying to get repaired back up as Chariot Archers coming through here very, very strongly. How many resources does Joe have at this point? He's not even able to produce these Chariot Archers uh, consistently here with only the eight villagers on wood at this point as villagers getting taken down left, right and center but a lot of resources being invested into taking this Migdol down. Does Joe have a market up at this point, answer is no, not just yet. Migdol's stronghold goes down, but at what cost here? As we still have a handful of chariot archers, Joe misclicking just a little bit there with his chariot archers as the hoplite's going to continue to push through here. Squash continuing to send everything Joe's way at this point, running straight up to those chariot archers. Good micro there from Joe. Gets out of Sukos here as well. Joe's lost a lot of villages here. He's got Skin of the Rhino coming through. He's got 13 idle villages at this point. Needs to get them to work. Needs a market. Needs to get his gold mine back up. Needs to get another Migdol stronghold. We do see the rock floating on this position here. So Squash has got to be a little bit careful. These villages on this gold mine here can get locusted. Potentially lose 10 villages over there. He's got villages in his main base as well. We've got the villages over here. 12 villages could potentially go down there with a the locust as well. So we'll see if Joe's going to be able to figure that one out. As the chariot archers are trying to move forward, snipe a couple of units left right and center here with the micro is exactly yeah. what joe needs to do as squash going to be retreating back here you gotta you gotta be thinking about this and being like joe Amen. technically right now is in a better position in terms of just resources that he's got but he's lost villages he's lost production so the longer this game goes in this state without damage being done by joe the worse off squash is going to be as the village is going to be bailing from this position not wanting to get hit by a locust where did squash's uh, odysseus go is the big question I don't see him in the main base. We see the villagers moving back over here as the, the rock floating over here. Will he drop the locust? He looks like he's not going to be going for it just yet. Uh, does he have the Odysseus out somewhere? It looks like he doesn't have it out. He drops this ring of nibble along here. Not going to be grabbing that one just yet as Joe going to be yet again throwing up his Migdol stronghold in a nice and safe position over here. Upgrades for Joe. He does have himself in classic Joe fashion, no plow. But uh, he... Uh, it's just funny because he forgets it all the time. Anyway, he's got some chariot archer raids coming through here. The, lo the locust gets dropped, but it misses. It misses. He could have killed all of those villages if he just waited a little bit longer on it. But Squash retreats out. He's going to be losing a couple more villages to the chariot archers here. And Squash is going to be more than fine to just retreat away from that position as now Joe is going to start building more and more of these chariot archers. He's got Axemen coming out as well, which might be a little bit of overkill. Generally speaking, against uh, against the Zeus Hoplite Toxodi army, you want to just go match chariot archers, not, not waste any time with the Axemen because it gives the Toxodes a kind of... Uh, advantage to some degree good micro here from joe going to be trying to get a little bit of damage done uh in this game as we see the gold mine just about to expire here joe still doesn't have himself the uh the gold in this game but these axemen over here now going to get some value here as squash has to retreat away from this one and joe's going to be moving up onto this position to potentially drop another migdol stronghold here and grab that gold mine there these chariot archers going to be returning back over onto this gold mine right now but squash has finally made the decision to start making some hippocon here which is going to be a really, really big help here in this game. Joe, on the other hand, zero gold at the moment, no market. We see the Chariot Archers coming through onto this position. We've got a handful of Hippocon over here ready to start fighting this one as Squash does retreat that villager back. Perfect. Look at that micro from Squash. Most people would have lost like two villagers there for the trade of one Chariot Archer, but Squash doesn't. He he controls that perfectly uh, as the, the uh, Axemen pushing it onto this position right now. We see the Patsukot's going to be doing a lot of damage from afar, but at this point, Joe doesn't really have an answer to these Hippocon. He's actually going to need to start making some Camelry here 
uh, as the Hoplites moving back up onto this position. Squash now going to be putting pressure onto this gold mine here as Joe trying to get sorted out with his economy, trying to get a, a villagers ready. He does have Skin of the Rhino, so he can pull off of this gold mine and start taking this fight. As we do see the Pharaoh getting sniped down here, villagers do turn around onto those Hoplites, going to be taking that fight as best as they possibly can. Joe's at 92 population. Uh, Squash is at 105 population for the time being as the Chariot Archers moving back and over here trying to get this take this fight here as best as they can one uh, one chariot archer goes down the hippocons goes down villagers going to be pulling off of that location dealing the damage as best as they possibly can here as the hoplites moving through to take out everything on this position and Joe is falling here to this pressure still trying to take this fight as best as he can the villagers pulling over here trying to take out the uh, the toxodes here villagers on this gold mine still managing to get gold but Joe's got no resources in the bank 50 population remaining squashing at 98 population still able to continue putting pressure in onto this position here and Joe has to tap out here after all is said and done squash goes full berserk in this game takes out the migdol stronghold takes out the gold positioning takes out the town center and joe just couldn't get going here in this game uh, i think this migdol stronghold it was placed in the correct position but because joe didn't put enough villagers over onto wood didn't drop his market didn't get enough chariot archers out lost his pharaoh a little bit too easily here squash was able to push in here and get the damage done take the migdol down and cause some pro pro problems for for joe and be uh, and to add to that joe then rebuilding this migdol stronghold in his main base meant that he didn't have gold to then build a migdol out on this position and and also the axemen here just they're not the right unit uh in this kind of a situation you just want mass chariot archers and that's going to prevent your opponent from ever pushing in even with a handful of hippocon it just doesn't help out that much especially when you have a patsuka sword too and you've got your villagers to help defend if he went mass chariot archers here instead of the axemen i think he would have been able to hold here uh but didn't go for it and Squash manages to get the gold star and get the dub here in this game. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.